Dungeon Masters of Reddit, what is the most useless item you gave your party that they were still able to exploit? Part 2. My favorite magic item my players found was a totally homebrewed item with no real productive function, but they still got creative with it. They found the Pie Stone. Holding the stone in your hand and concentrating will fill a 25-foot radius area with the stone as the center with the smell of a pie of your choice. This effect lasts for 10 minutes or until you dismiss the effect. The rogue used it to sneak past guards and as a distraction tactic when scouting and such. Obligatory, I'm a player, not a DM. We get a lot of those, that's totally fine. My DM once let me design my own weapon as a reward for being the only person of seven to show up to a session. Only rule was it had to be silly and useless. I created Archibald, the world's greatest ladies' man. <laughs> he was the soul of a super charismatic elf trapped in a tiny little iron lantern. Basics, the flame was a little ghostly elf's head that would act as my wingman, but only when I tried to romance monsters. Dumb, borderline useless, and led to a lot of silly role-playing opportunities. Perfect! Then one day, months later, our party got into a fight with a Hydra. No one had any caustic or flame-based attacks to cauterize the necks, so the heads kept growing back. Then our barbarian noticed that technically Archibald was a little flame, so bludgeoning the Hydra with his lantern would count as burning damage. I proceeded to beat every head to a pulp with a screaming elven smooth talker. Peak D&D right there. I gave my players a chalice that, when drunk from, caused the user to sweat fat profusely. Hey, that sounds pretty useful. They used it to overcome a cold-based trap in the dungeon. It was a hallway that got progressively colder, so they emerge on the other end, covered in fat, into the chamber of the dungeon boss. It was a slippery fight. I found a homebrew item someplace called a used bag of holding. It basically covers everything you put in the bag with a thin layer of glitter. One of my players took this and began scraping off the glitter and collecting it. Eventually, he had enough glitter bags to where he could use animate objects on it. The little shit would have had several of these bags fly around and dump their contents on people causing great confusion as the glitter would get in their eyes and hardly come off because it was sticky. I gave my players a torch that couldn't be lit by normal means. After two or three sessions, one of them finally asked how to light it. I had totally forgotten about it by this point, so I made the NPC mention that it could only be lit by an Elder Red Dragon's breath weapon and once lit would burn forever. Suddenly, the entire party of 3rd and 4th level tunes decide they want to veer off course and get this thing lit. I had a bit called the bargain bin, <laughs> where I would just improv something stupid, mostly stupid made up on the spot spells. My favorite thing was a bag of holding that held exactly as much as a bag of that volume would hold. What I didn't expect was them getting creative. They just made the bag bigger by sewing more into it, and then rolled it up. Still cumbersome, as I forced extra turns to use this thing if they wanted to use it in combat, but it was a great laugh at how they undermined my bullshit. Since it weighs 15 pounds regardless of internal weight, it was still a tool. Frost Sock. Everyone's feet became blocks of ice. They did it and immediately nat 20 on a melee, so I went with it and it caused enemies' feet to detach from their ankle and stay stuck to the floor. Swarm of flies. It's just a swarm of flies. No damage, it's just annoying. They used it inside a tavern to create a wild distraction and made their own entrance into the plot-related area. Bluntify Weapons. A spell that creates a magical barrier that prevents the weapon from ever making contact with anything. Has to be done while holding the weapon. So they just snuck into a guard's armory and did it to all their weapons and then robbed a bank. I still threw them some curveballs like it still caused a knockback and... Well, this guy owns his weapons and kept them at his house that night, so he could still stabby stabby. During a dungeon crawl, we found a cloak of many things. It only had three patches, two of which were 20-foot holes, and the last of which was a ladder. 
I volunteered to keep it. Later on, we encountered an archmage who was supposed to get away after the encounter, and we had absolutely shit luck against him. I decided to throw one of the 20-foot holes at him. I rolled an at 20. And that is the story of how I defeated a level 10 archmage at 4th level. Edit for context. The DM ruled that since I rolled an at 20, the hole appeared on him. So he took a crap ton of force damage and died. I gave them a carpet and they used it to kill six people. Edit. They laid it on people and smothered and burnt them. <laughs> That's disgusting. The way they covered the six people was enlarge and reduce. They did kill guards without enlarging it, but that was why I gave it to them. So they could strangle the guards, but when we get to the leader of the cultists, they realize they can double cast enlarge and reduce, making the already 20 foot by 20 foot all the way up to 80 by 80 feet. They did at first try to crush and smother them, but I decided I shouldn't let that work, so they set it on fire, and I couldn't find a way around this. Moral of the story. Wizards can make mundane items tools for mass murder. I gave my players an amulet that lets them speak to rocks. The one player who picked it up spent most of that session talking to his new pet rock and would often interrogate rocks they find at scenes for information usually getting either vague info or stuff they can clearly see already. Because it's a rock. Later on, another party member wanted to try talking to another rock, actually a pile of rocks made into a crude gravestone related to their character's backstory, only for the first party member to find out that the amulet was cursed and they couldn't remove it. Later on, they got it removed and had the amulet identified, where I revealed that the amulet only let them think they could speak to rocks, and all the quote-unquote information they had asked of rocks was only information that was already known to them. They basically started using the now uncursed version of the amulet as a tool to ask me for information they had forgotten or needed clarification on, but in character rather than just ask me out of character, which was great. Healing Rock. It does 1d4 bludgeoning damage, but heals 1d4 plus 1 HP. It was supposed to be a funny way to bring characters back from unconsciousness, by restoring a small amount of HP. Barbarians, however, resist bludgeoning damage while raging. The healing rock became their go-to healing strategy for keeping the barbarian healed between fights. We acquired a brick mold along with some other basic tools when we found a workshop in a dungeon. It was supposed to just be some set dressing, but I took it anyway. We later used it and several more we made off of its design to reinforce a village that would soon come under attack. With everyone in the village making clay bricks for two weeks straight, we had enough of them to build a wall tall enough to make one of the ways into the town rather protected, so we could focus the fighting on the other entrance where we could have more manpower at once. It saved a lot of lives since we weren't able to be flanked. They got a vaguely sword-shaped branch of ash wood. That was it. This was in a planescape setting, so a few hours later, the sorcerer persuaded an apologetic jinn that the adjectives were unordered. So, it in fact was a sword shaped like it was vaguely a branch of ash wood. To make amends for destroying part of the party's inventory, the jinn remade the sword, per the sorcerer's description, while under a compulsion of truth. So was born Sylvan Blade. I homebrewed the Hat of Many Hats. It's a regular hat, but it's made of shift weave, so it can have the appearance of any other hat. It was part of a shop selling dodgy knockoffs of regular magical items, in this case, the Hat of Disguise. The halfling who always struggled with RP took it, and it became a great way to get her more involved in what her character would do. It started when she transmuted herself in an I'm with stupid baseball cap to tease one of the other party members after he'd come up with some bullshit plan, which led to one of the other players asking what this mysterious Bayes ball was, and she just ran with it that it was a game they used to play back in her home region when they were kids. All of a sudden, she had a backstory, rather than just being, I'm sure and I stab things. I'm sure she would have come into RP eventually, but it was like giving her a dressing up box and seeing her realize that she could actually do things that weren't just purely mechanical. Ring of Incredible AC, invulnerability for all the assholes picking shit apart. 
meant to be a gag, gives them 1000 AC, but turns them into a solid crystal statue when they put the ring on. They run into this crypt that was overrun with skeletons, meant to scare them off to remind them that they're not all powerful, and they weren't ready to face what was inside. The skeletons were crawling up this well that I described as three feet across. One of them jumped over the well and put the ring on, plummeting several hundred feet and killing most of the skeletons. Edit. For everyone making some variation of the AC doesn't matter for falling damage, um, <clears throat> I hope your DM breaks every item on your person the next time you take falling damage. Ooh, that's cold. Ran an alien RPG session one Halloween. There was a wrench, like a normal red wrench. More than anything, it was just something funny that they'd check on in. They'd ask every 10 minutes or so if the wrench was still there, which it always was. They used it to adjust some of the piping in the oxygen recycling room, pumped a section of the space station full of pure oxygen, and then proceeded to incinerate a handful of xenomorphs and my ubermorph. Don't mix pyros with real-world engineers. My DM gave me an eye. Player here, we had an NPC stalking us through the travel portion of the campaign and would show up and do odd things like pull out his eye and show it to us and then pop it back in. Just gross stuff because he was undead. One time, I used a pickpocket check to take it from him and he insisted that I give it back to him. We were in the temple for the god of trickery, which we both worshipped, so I put his eye in the collection plate. He could either take it out and suffer the consequence or lose the eye for good. <laughs> that was a great moment. Hey, it's me, Brian Von Vier, checking in after the vid. Make sure to leave a like, to subscribe, and to ring that bell to get notified whenever we post or go live. And of course, check out our secondary channel, Riptovia, for more D&D stories, as well as myself, Brian Von Vier. All the love, everybody. Be safe, be happy, and we will see you next time. Bye for now.